I apologize for my absence. I've been laid low by Miss Rona. No, I haven't been sick, just like laid low. But my spirits brightened when I saw that Square Enix is going to be releasing Near Replicant for the 10 year anniversary of the game's release. And after the crazy success of Near Automata, they'd be dumb not to do that. Back in 2010, the team released two different games. One of them was Near Gestalt, which the Western audience has got about a big burly dad saving his daughter. And then the non Western audiences and also the French, for some reason, were given Near Replicant about an adorable brother saving his younger sister from fantasy cancer. Same plots, different men. But the original Near's plot was about as penetrable as a lead wall, and had a lot of important plot details locked away in Grimoire Near, which was a companion book filled with short stories and interviews and a drama CD script, and that was never released to Western audiences, so of course we were confused. Luckily for us, a dedicated team has diligently translated a majority of Grimoire Near into English, and I was able to catch up on the retired reading. And honestly, what the fuck, Yoko Taro? Hey, Yoko Taro, what the fuck? Are you serious? So in order to help any other confused gamers who might also wonder what the fuck Yoko Taro, here are the top five pieces of information that come from Grimoire Nier that might be helpful to understanding Nier's plot. For the record, I'm not going to try to summarize Nier's plot, maybe some other time, but I want to get this out first. And I'm also going to try not to spoil things because I am in love with Nier's plot and I think that it is best experienced as raw as possible. But again, this is some stuff that they kind of left out and might be helpful. So, number five, Emil was gay for Replicant Nier and we weren't allowed to have that. Anyone who has played Nier Automata to death probably knows Emil and anyone who's seen Yoko Taro's interview persona has seen Emil's face. He was a cheerful little boy turned into a cheerful little immortal skeleton who could do magic, and he had the biggest heart, and he was so sweet, and he was gay for Nier. And this was completely omitted from Nier Gestalt, but they kept it in Nier Replicant, where Emil is constantly being flustered, and even in Grimoire Nier, he like writes a few of the segments, and he gets like carried away by his feelings for him, and he like you know, gets flustered while he's thinking about him. It's very cute. And this isn't like a reading into subtext kind of thing. Yoko specifically stated that Emil is in love with Nier during an interview that is transcribed in Grimoire Nier. And it's also one of the more understandable changes about the replicant to Gestalt character shift, since Emil falling in love with a middle-aged man wouldn't have been as realistic. Or maybe it would have. There's definitely something to it. Number four, Kaine's grandma knew Tyron, and she was in on the whole backstory. In the games, Kaine's grandmother Kali was the only really kind figure of Kaine's life until Nier showed up. And we never see her in the games, but we're given a lot of examples of how she was a very gruff, but very kind, badass lady. Like everyone else, she also had another version of herself kicking around in reality, and that woman was a war veteran with PTSD. A script for the drama CD has several conversations between Kali and other officials during that time, including like researchers who were working with Emil and military officials, and one of those was Tyrant, the shade that would later possess Kaine's body, which I don't count as a spoiler because we learned that a few minutes after we meet her, but they knew each other. What? What? Number three, Vice was human once, and a child soldier. In one of the Grimoire Nier short stories, and then there were none, we hear about a sort of battle royale between children from the perspectives of one of those children. And unlike in Fortnite, where everyone is rendered insufferable due to bad sportsmanship, everyone in this fight got turned into books. Yep. The guys shouting had stopped, and I saw a face form on the now pitch black book. Just like the last, it did not bear the slightest resemblance to his original face. However, I'm not sure whether you could say I saw it, as my body was already sucked into the book. I cannot see the color of my own cover, though. Ah, I see. White. The White Book. Grimoire Vice. What a ridiculous name. I can't hold my laugh. So from now on, a new farce begins. Now that we are given new faces, what roles are we to perform? Hey, Yoko. Number two, Kaine is intersexed, and that's Tyron's fault. Remember Tyron from Kali's story? We're back to him now. In the drama CDs, we learn that Tyron is a dirty coward from the military, whose dishonorment of his alternate self in the game proper was destroyed, and so now he has to jump around and possess people. And who does he possess but everybody's OG wifey material, Kaine. Vice, you dumbass! 
Start making sense, you rotten book, or you're gonna be sorry. Maybe I'll rip your pages out one by one, or maybe I'll put you in the goddamn furnace. How can someone with such a big, smart brain get hypnotized like a little bitch, huh? But she's a lady being possessed by a male shade, and that resulted in some interesting anatomical quirks. Now, I'm not here to hurt anybody's feelings, so I'm gonna try to be as cool about this as humanly possible and say that people who are intersex probably didn't ask to be represented by somebody who's running around in a negligee and murdering people, but they probably could have asked to be represented by somebody with such a kind, sweet heart as Kaine actually has. And I hope that that's cool. Cooler than Yoko was because he sanctioned porn about it. The short story, Banquet of the Witch, wasn't given a proper translation, but we do have a summary that was lifted from a Chinese forum that manages to capture the feeling of it and the tone of it, and that's great. And I'm not gonna read it because the summary even gets a little bit porny, but it describes a traveler Discovering Kaide, fresh from killing a pack of shades, having a personal time. Hey, Yoko? Yoko! And the number one fact that you should know going into Nier Replicant is that Nier used to be a sex worker, and he might have killed his client. Hey, Yoko? Answer your phone! Yoko, you can't hide from this! What the fuck? I'm not joking. I wish I was joking. In the short story Red and Black, Nier, who is short on money and needing expensive medicine for his sister, starts having sex with an older man for money, and apparently starts disliking people touching his hair for that reason, so he starts tying it up. And he is... 14. Amazing. And then when called upon by said older man to help him kill some monsters outside of town, Nier goes to kill them with the man and doesn't return with the man. Yoko, what are you implying? Did older Nier have sex with men also? Can I have a list? What happened? Yoko! Thank you for watching. I hope you all got to learn something from this. Let me know what your favorite fact was. I hope that everyone will go out and support Nier Replicant when it comes out, and hopefully I'll see more of you. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and ring the bell. I'll see you guys in the next video, and if no one has said that they love you today, know that I do. Yoko, what the fuck?